In this recording, I'd like to cover how to create and use a template. In most cases, templates are created from existing documents, and that's what I'm going to do here as well. I have an existing document called the Unit 3 Sample. I'm going to open that up. It's actually already open, so I'm going to open it up. And if you didn't follow along in the last recording where we styled this, you might want to go back and do that because that'll help make this template look a little bit more appropriate. I don't need the styles pane anymore, so I'm going to close it, get it out of the way. And now what I want to do is take this report and turn it into a template. Well, what's the difference between a document and a template? A template is a starting point for a new document. When you go to File New in Microsoft Word, there are hundreds, probably thousands, of different templates out there to get you started with a document. If you wanted a document with a butterfly on it if you wanted a certificate of achievement, single spaced blank document, if you want, you know, there's all kinds of these templates that are built by Microsoft, but most of them don't quite meet your needs. A little week ago I was looking for a certificate of achievement and this one was close, but not really, I just ended up creating my own. So that's what I want to show you here. So templates are starting points for documents. You don't start with an empty document, you start with all this stuff in there already all these titles, headings, and everything in there in your templates. So this is our quarterly report, our quarterly sales report. I have to generate this every quarter. And instead of going in and starting from scratch, or going in and taking this one from the first quarter and erasing all the text and then putting in the second quarter text and saving it with a new name, I can create a template that has placeholders for all the stuff that I want to fill in to make life a little bit easier. The risk of not of doing that technique that I just described, I open this one up and then save as the second report or second quarter report. Oftentimes you'll get so excited or so into creating the report you'll forget to save as and you'll wipe out the first quarter report. Templates also alleviate that problem. To turn this into a template, I'm going to take the stuff that changes from quarter to quarter out and put in placeholder text instead. The first thing I want to take out is the word first because it could be the first, second, third, or fourth quarter. All right, and I'm going to take that out and replace it with a placeholder. What the book recommends is you put your placeholders in square brackets and say something like enter the quarter. And then the book recommends that you highlight that and shade it yellow so that or highlight it yellow so that the user can see that they need to go change it. It makes it stand out. I think that's a good idea. Okay. So when the next when the user opens this template, but and I'm gonna remember to save this as a template, but I'll think I'll make my changes. I'm a little risky here. I have to be careful not to hit save to overwrite my report before I'm done with this here, but I don't have a whole lot to do. So there's my first placeholder. All of this stuff is going to change every month, so I'm going to take that out. Put in another placeholder, square brackets, enter the introduction text. You can put anything here you want. Keep it simple and just say enter text here. And maybe I'll do that. Let's just say enter text here. The main reason I want to do that is because I want to simplify this recording a little bit and not have to modify a lot of stuff. I'm going to put a lot of placeholders in. So there's my enter text here placeholder. I'm going to copy that to the clipboard and replace this. So you got an extra paragraph marker there. Replace this and this and this. Now most of our meetings have old business, new business awards, so I'm just going to leave that, and if they want to, they can modify it. The conclusion has its bulleted list, but then there's a final paragraph here, so I'm going to paste that one more time. Now, what that one accidentally did is it formatted it. Let's see if I can undo that by using this. There we go. Don't merge with my list. And so now my enter text here is there. And now when the user uses this template, all they have to do is wipe that out. The list items here will also change, so I'm going to take most of those out. And you have to be careful here. If you take out the last paragraph marker, it also takes out the star. So I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to backspace one character. can't see it, but there's a paragraph marker there. And by, take, by leaving the paragraph marker there, when I delete this, it leaves the, it leaves the bullet point. Okay. And then I'm going to put my enter text here, 
in that bullet point and backspace out the extra one that it gave me. So now this is going to create a list of bullet items. This one will create just some text that they can enter if they want to enter any more text. And now I have a template. So let's save that. Two ways to save it. So I'm going to save it to two different places to show you the difference. The first one is, and the book recommends this, is to do an export. And I like this technique the best because it doesn't redirect you. We'll see the redirection in a minute. And change the file type to a template and then hit save. Now Word's going to ask me where do you want to put this. It's a couple of different places that you can put templates and notice that it's still on the desktop. One place the book recommends is to go to your documents folder and then go to the custom office templates. If you're using this in an office, your work location, you could have custom office templates stored in there. And that'll be available to you on this computer to use those templates as often as you want. I'm going to rename the template and call it the sales report or quarterly sales report. You call them whatever you want. I tend to put the word template in there as well so I can see that I'm working on a template. And notice the type of document is not DOCX, it's DOTX, that's a template file. So now this has been saved as a template and it's been put in that special location. Another way to save it as a template is to do a file, save as, and then browse. Okay. This is already a template. Notice where it takes me. It takes me automatically to the documents folder. And it can also, it'll also, it'll jump you there. And what's really annoying is if you have just a Word document, and you say put this on the desktop, and then you change the type to template. Let's see if it does it here. No, it didn't do it on this one. What if I do it as a macro enable template? I'm just experimenting here. Then it took me back. Notice where it took me to the custom office templates folder because I did a file save as template. Even if you change the location first. So the key here is to give it a name change it to a template, and then tell it where you want to put it. I want this one on the desktop, and I want it to be a DOTX, and now it's not going to let me out here. DOTX, and notice it took me back again, custom office templates, and notice that's in the documents folder. I'm wondering why I don't see the one I saved a little while ago. I want it on the desktop. Save. Okay, so now this template has been stored in two different places, and I'm going to close my template. Notice the template icon is a little different than the document icon. And also, if I go to this PC, Documents, Custom Office Templates, there isn't one in there anymore. It's like it moved it on me. I'm going to copy it from here to here. And now it's in both places. This is a template. That's a template. Let me show you the difference. If I start Microsoft Word, it gives me a list of what do you want to, what kind of document do you want, a blank one or whatever. But for some reason, I'm not getting personalized ones here. Let me pause and see if I can figure out why. I just added that quarterly report back to the customized templates one more time from Word, and it seems to be working now. So I'm going to see if I'm going to launch Word again. I'm going to get a new document. And notice now I have this link here that wasn't there before, personal. Those are the templates that are inside that personal folder, and those only seem to be recognized if Word saves them in there. If you copy them like I did, it didn't recognize it, at least not initially. So I'm going to open up personal, and here's my support quarterly sales report, and I'm going to select that. Now the one thing to recognize here, when you use a template to create a new document, notice my title bar says document one. It used the template as a starting point. Here's all my placeholders. I used the template as a starting point, but if you hit save here, it's not going to replace the DOTX template document. So you, there's no way to accidentally damage your template by not remembering to do a save as. If I do a save right now, it's going to ask me where do you want to put it because this, do, it, this document started from my report template. Right? It's where it started from, 
but that's not what it's going to be saved as. I can save it as anything I want, and it leaves the starting point document alone. So that's one advantage of using templates. So that's one way to use a template. Do file new, pick it from your personal, if you've stored it in the custom templates. Remember, I also stored it on my desktop. You don't have to store it on your desktop. You can store it anywhere you want. I have a folder of my favorite templates. And that folder of templates is in a convenient location because if I want to use a template, I don't normally do File New. And yes, the customized Office Documents is in a convenient, relatively convenient location. But I put those templates on my flash drive so that I can take them with me wherever I want to go. Those custom Office templates are only available on this computer. And so if I'm in my office at home or my office at work, I don't want to have two copies of that thing. So I would put something like this on my flash drive, or you could put it in the cloud today. And to use a template, you'd simply double click it. And once again, it opens Mako Plastic, uses that template, and it gives me document one. It's not called re quarterly report document. It's just called the document one document. And when I change things, like enter the quarter here, so let's highlight this and say this is going to be for my second quarter. Notice the highlighting goes away. And here's some sample text. Okay, nothing major. I'm just demonstrating what you would do. You'd fill all these things in. And here's my list. Once again, I have to be careful. And we're going to fix this. I have to be careful here that I don't select the paragraph marker like it, like it does pretty much automatically because that will paste the bullet. Uh, in this case, it left it, so that's good. Press Enter, and I'm getting double-spaced bullets, just like I want. Right. So that's, now, if I want to, I can save this as a second quarterly report. And then when I'm ready, I can use the same template to create the third quarter report, to create the fourth quarter report, and so on. But one thing I just noticed here while we were scrolling through is that this sentence here says the quarterly meeting will take place in Memphis. Well, I'm guessing that we're not going to hold our meeting in the same place every time. I need a placeholder there. I want to change my template. If I put a placeholder here, that doesn't change my template. It changes the document that was based on the template. To change the template, two ways to do it. I'm going to close this and not save it. I can do File, Open, okay, and then here's my template. And if I open the template, open it, not use it, open it. Now my title bar says Quarterly Sales Report Template DOTX, and I'm actually changing the template. That's one way to change a template if it's in your customized templates folder. But what if it's out here on your desktop or on your flash drive? You could use the same technique. But instead of opening Word first, what I like to do to open this template so that I can modify my starting point is to right-click it and choose Open. Notice New means create a new document from this template versus Open that opens my template. So now, once again, this title bar is very important you pay attention to that because if it says DOTX, you're modifying your template. hope that's what you want to do. All right, so down here, I'm going to steal this text. Copy it to the clipboard, find my city, here it is, double click and paste, and enter city. It looks like I took an extra space out, so I'll put it back in there. Okay. So now that's part of my template. I save it. Now, one thing to remember, I saved, I modified the ones on my desktop, not the ones in the custom folders. I don't normally store templates in two different places. You pick one of those. I like the portable ones that are available anywhere, so I put these in a folder. Those are my preference. I don't have anything in my custom templates in my home office or work office. So once again, now I'm going to double-click this, or I could right-click and do New. I just double-click, creates a new document. There we go. Notice that all the text here is still there, and here's my new placeholder. So occasionally you'll create a template, but then realize that you want to change some things. Maybe John Smith down here gets replaced by somebody else. I want to change the template, change John's name. Maybe his title changes. I want to change his name. Change the template, and then every document that you create from then on using this template will automatically have that new information in it. 
Hope that gives you a nice introduction to templates. There are a few other things we can do. I'm not a big fan of these yellow placeholders because it's possible for the user to do some damage. So in the next recording, I'm going to show you how to replace those with something that's a little more user-friendly and safe.